Yo, this is Infinite here, and without any delay, we're gonna get right into this cover article with Dr. Dre, 1996, The Source magazine. Pivotal moment in hip hop history right here, y'all. And I'm gonna give it some light that it deserves because what Dre does in this article is prophetic. It's, he's gonna predict the future of the landscape of hip hop for many years to come. At the time, it seemed like a great risk because Dr. Dre was striking out on his own. He was leaving his home of death row, a house that he had built. And he was gonna go out on his own and create a new record label which would become Aftermath Records. Interestingly enough, in the article he mentions it is Black Market Records. That was the first label that they were gonna use. But there was already a label called Black Market Records of Bay Area artists. And so he wasn't able to use that name and the name later became Aftermath Records. And at the time, Suge Knight did not want to let Dr. Dre leave death row. They wanted to keep Dr. Dre. And it was Dre who was taking the great risk and striking out on his own. The article sets it off with a quote from Theodore Roosevelt. It is not the critic that counts. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who at best knows in the end the triumphs of high achievement and who at worst if he fails at least fails while daring greatly so that his place will never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat so this is dre stepping out on his own when nobody thought it was a good idea because at this time death row was at its height this was the golden age of hip-hop and death row was head and shoulders above all labels and above everybody in music at that time Dr. Dre had hooked Tupac up with the single California Love that had catapulted Tupac to the stratosphere. It had taken Tupac from being one of the greatest artists in hip-hop to being the greatest artist in hip-hop. In February 2013, Tupac releases All Eyes On Me, and it truly was All Eyes On Tupac at that time because he had, he had surpassed Snoop, his label mate Snoop Doggy Dog, to become the number one artist in hip-hop. And Dre was a big factor in that because California Love was an even bigger single than Dear Mama, Keep Your Head Up, or I Get Around, or any of Tupac's previous hits. So why would Dr. Dre step out at that time, at that rhyme, and create Aftermath Records? It was because Dr. Dre could see ahead in the future, and he, he is a true visionary of hip-hop, and he knew what was going to happen. And it's Dr. Dre that's a true visionary, and now, because of that vision, you see Dr. Dre as hip-hop's first billionaire. You see Dr. Dre as a successful producer, rapper, and even successful businessman. He's got Beats headphones. But before all that, Dr. Dre's career was in jeopardy. And by the way, this wasn't the first time Dr. Dre's career was in jeopardy and not the first time he stepped out on his own. He also left N.W.A. when N.W.A. was at its height because he just wasn't feeling right. So when Dr. Dre ain't feeling right, Dr. Dre moves out on his own and he's willing to take that risk. And in this article, he says that in the future, he will create, he will find the new Snoop Dogs and he will create records bigger than the records that they had on death row. And lo and behold, nobody thought he could make a record bigger than The Chronic, bigger than Doggy Style. But lo and behold, Dr. Dre would in fact create, create such records with the Marshall Mathers LP, with 2001, with Get Rich and Die Trying with 50 Cent. But at that time, it was not, nobody thought it was likely that Dre would be able to achieve such heights on his own. Because Death Row was home to gr such great and talented artists as Snoop, Tupac, uh, Nate Dogg, The Dog Pound. The Dog Pound had just went double platinum without really even being mainstream household names. Daz and Corrupt were not stars in their own rights. West Coast hip hop heads loved Daz and Corrupt and they knew Daz and Corrupt, but mainstream fans did not. It was that Death Row le logo and Death Row gold standard that Dr. Dre had created for the label that made artists such as the Dog Pound instantly go double platinum in that era. So it was Dre who was taking the risk to now step out on his own and have to create new artists that were going to become successful and become platinum. And consequently enough, his first album failed critically and commercially if you uh to, to reach dre's high standards the aftermath presents album had a banging lead single east coast west coast killers which was one of the most timely cuts in hip-hop history he was one of the first ahead of the curve to speak out against the east coast west coast beef and on the track he had west coast artists rbx and be real 
paired with East Coast artists KRS-One and Nas. And in that record, he, he, he defiantly spoke out against the beef. It was an ill video. It was like an Armageddon setup, and yet it failed somehow. Somehow, it failed to blow. It failed to blow up. And even he came right after that with, with the Been There Done That, another stellar track, which also failed to blow up. But that was another timely track early and ahead of its time, speaking out against the East Coast, West Coast beef, and Dre going out on his own and saying, look, I'm still Dre, I'm still doing my thing, I'm still in the lab, I'm still sitting back, I'm with my money, just watching all the bullshit that's taking place. Well, what was the bullshit that was taking place? Well, he could see ahead and he saw what would become of Death Row. He saw that Death Row would succumb to violence and the ruin that would come to, to Tupac Shakur, the ruin that would come to Suge Knight. And Snoop Dogg without Dr. Dre was not the same. The Dogfather album, though it did sell double platinum, was not, nowhere near the caliber of the doggy style record that he had recorded with Dr. Dre. Snoop ended up stranded on death row, had to flee to no limit, released another lackluster album, even more lackluster in fact, to, to a severe, severe degree. The game is to be sold, not to be told. And so hip hop was really at a lull at that time and that rhyme, and, but Dre persevered and in 1999, he released the Slim Shady LP, and the rest is history, you know what I'm saying? Because he hooked Eminem up with a lead single that would reach the mainstream fans, My Name Is, and then Eminem had the street credibility and underground sensibility coming up in the battle ranks of Detroit to hold down the streets and the underground hip-hop heads, and the rest is history, Dr. Dre would blow up. But this was a vision that Dr. Dre had in 1996, and he expresses that vision. This was his first time speaking out to the media. There were so many rumors circulating. What? Dr. Dre's leaving death row? Dr. Dre's reading, leaving death row? And that's why this article is probably one of the most pivotal and classic hip-hop articles you'll ever find in any magazine. This is a collector's item right here. This magazine, it's one of my prized possessions. You know, Dr. Dre leaving death row, setting it off. And there's a lot of other little anecdotes in the, in the magazine. He's giving props to Lauren Hill, which was really, you don't, didn't see much at that time. A, West Coast, a prominent West Coast artist giving props to the East Coast. And he was saying how dope Lauren Hill was and how he would have loved to have worked with her and how the Fugees were dope. And then, of course, a couple years later, Lauren Hill blows up on her own solo album with, uh, with the, what, five, six times platinum album. And Dre was giving props. Dre wasn't jealous of nobody. He wished success to Death Row. He wished success to all their artists. He said they're going to check for anything that comes out of Death Row because we built such a standard. And that was the truth. It would take another year before Death Row would finally crumble because at that time, Death Row was still hot. And everybody was trying to check out everything that they dropped. So again, it was Dre taking that risk. And it was Dre that would ultimately prevail. So this was, uh, I'm just sharing one of the key moments in hip hop history, y'all. Y'all, so bless, bless the culture. Peace.